All right, let's talk about a behavior design uh, for changing any behavior or any habit. And so BJ Fogg has found this perfect design, which really matches anyone's behavior around uh, changes in their life. And so what he's come up with is uh, two things, really. Uh, the model itself, which is how to think clearly about the behavior, and then the method, how to design to that particular behavior. And so what I'm going to show you is the curve that matches his formula, which is B equals MAP, or behavior equals motivation plus ability plus prompt or trigger. And when all of those align is when the behavior changes, this is when you start to build a habit. So this is what a curve looks like. And we're going to talk about how you influence that curve as you move through what your new habit's going to be and how you choose which of the levers to pull to help you change that behavior. So as I go over to the map here, what you'll see here is a uh, fog behavior model. And again, a lot of this material comes out of BJ Fogg's Tiny Habits book, if you're looking for a reference or to dig in more. Uh, but this is the curve. And so you can just imagine, like, if you have motivation and ability down the side, uh, usually at the intersection of motivation, ability, and then what we'll get to is the prompt is where the change starts to happen. And so when we think about levers, anything that you change in your life, if it takes high motivation, which, and you don't have it, uh, it's gonna be a very difficult lever for you to start with for making that change. And whereas ability, if you have the ability to do it, it's something very simple for you to pick up and do like flossing one tooth, that probably is a lever that you want to start pulling on, right? To be able to make that change. Uh, and then prompt. If you're not doing something today and you don't have something queued up to remind you to do it, you just won't do it. So a lot of people will lean towards prompt first because that kind of is the beginning trigger. So in other words, if you're going to start flossing again, you're going to want to make sure that you put the floss right next to your toothbrush when you're in the bathroom so that it's right front and center. If it's out of sight, out of mind, there's really no prompt. You might have a thought of, oh, well, I should floss today. But again, if there's no prompt and there's no motivation there, uh, even though the ability is there, you're just not going to do it, right? It's just like anything else. Let's say you want to eat healthier. You want to be in the kitchen with healthier food. Well, if the healthier food's not available uh, or it's tucked away where the chips are on the counter, you're going to choose the chips. And so how you pull these levers makes a lot of sense. And so as we're going to go through your habits and the exercises we have on here, think about this curve. And so this is an example you can see here uh, where tidying a desk at work has to meet, you know, the ability. Is it easy to do? Like, does it take two, three minutes to do? Uh, how highly motivated am I to do it? Um, do I care to do it or do I want to get moving? And so how do I build a little bit of motivation in that? Uh, and then we'll dig into uh, what the prompts mean regarding making that change. So uh, more to come. I'm going to share the exercise template and the curve here so you can kind of draft your own uh, on there as far as one of the habits that you're going to choose to focus on. And we can start to pick out uh, which lever uh, you, you can choose to start implementing your tiny habit.